So now we're going to talk about one-way functions, another core uh, part of uh, modern cryptography. Now, uh, we're first going to talk about uh, one-way functions in, in general and particularly hash functions, which is uh, one instantiation of one-way functions. And then we're going to talk a bit about how these can be applied and uh, create message authentication codes to uh, give us a bit of uh, authentication because this is this we haven't uh, covered before. So the idea of a hash function or one-way function is that we want a function which we can efficiently compute but it should be impossible uh, to find its inverse. So it should be easy to evaluate f of x and get y, but it should be really uh, difficult given y to find uh, uh, x back again. So that's uh, what we want to achieve. So let's look at uh, these two non-injective surjective functions. Uh, so where we have a few uh, possible x's and a few possible y's and uh, in this case uh, both 3 and 4 map to c uh, so it should be impossible to if we get the c it should be impossible to find whether it was 3 or 4 and in this case it uh, should be even even worse because uh, each uh, has uh, uh, even more uh, collisions here. So if you get a one, it's uh, impossible to, to find whether it's uh, A or C or ABC, uh, because all map to ones, it could be either. So think about uh, this for a bit. Um, could these uh, to be possible one-way functions? Think about uh, this for a, a moment. Now, uh, they should not be, uh, they cannot be one-way functions uh, because we can easily uh, enumerate all the possibilities uh, of inverses. Uh, and sometimes it's sufficient to find one of the inverses, I mean, one of the possible inverses. Uh, and uh, that's not really, uh, acceptable uh, to us. So the way we define a one-way function uh, cryptographically is that uh, we want a function from an arbitrary long bit string into another arbitrary long bit string. And we say that uh, this function edge here is one way if uh, there exists an efficient algorithm A to actually compute the function. Uh, and uh, second, for every efficient algorithm A prime and every positive polynomial P and all sufficiently large Ns, uh, we have uh, this uh, statement uh, about the probabilities of uh, A prime succeeding. So the probability that the output of this algorithm A prime uh, given uh, edge of x here, so given the, the output of the, the hash function and uh, given the, the security parameter here, so this is what uh, limits uh, A's execution time. Uh, so the probability that the output of this algorithm is any of the possible values uh, that you can input as x here. Uh, is very small. Uh, it's uh, one over this polynomial here. So as n increases, uh, then this uh, this value here shrinks. So as, uh, the algorithm uh, gets uh, an infinite, uh, infinitely many. Uh, steps of execution, uh, this probability shrinks towards uh, zero. 
So it's uh, it should be really difficult for uh, this algorithm A prime to find even one of these inverses. And clearly that wasn't the case in the two examples that we had on the previous slide because you can instantly find uh, all possible inverses. And that is uh, not acceptable. So there are uh, various implementations of these, uh, uh, I mean, uh, these hash functions. Uh, so uh, prob probably you might have heard of some of them, like MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, and SHA-3. So MD5 is uh, totally broken, so it's definitely not a one-way function. Uh, but uh, yeah, SHA-1 has some attacks, but it's not completely super broken, but it should not be used. But SHA-256 and SHA-3, they are perfectly fine. And uh, the example af applications of these uh, hash function is, for instance, verifying file content integrity. We use them in digital signatures, and uh, we also use them to protect passwords uh, due to their uh, properties. Now this one-wayness uh, property returns us a, a really useful property in, in many situations. And uh, to some extent you have that encryption also has uh, this sort of one-way, uh, one-wayness property. Because given uh, K and M, uh, we compute the ciphertext and that's really easy to do. But uh, given C, it's uh, really difficult to compute either uh, K or M. Uh, however, uh, inc while encryption is generally bijective, hash functions are generally not bijective. Uh, so that's uh, a common, commonly uh, the difference between uh, these two. So there is a difference between when we say we, we want a hash function and when we want uh, encryption. That's the bijectiveness. So um, message authentication codes uh, can be constructed using uh, these hash functions. And uh, we will look at one example here, uh, why we need message authentication codes. So let's, uh, let's say that we have uh, the one-time pad. So we have encryption is the same as decryption and it's uh, whatever bit we want to encrypt, uh, XORed with the K, so that is uh, plus K modulo two. And uh, let's assume that Alice and Bob share some secret K here. Uh, and then Alice encrypts the message M under this uh, key, uh, and she gets the ciphertext C and she sends that to Bob. Uh, Eve, of course, uh, who listens to everything that passes, she intercepts this C, uh, but she cannot get to M, uh, thanks to perfect secrecy. However, uh, what Eve does is that she computes a different ciphertext C prime here by taking C XORed with Eve's message, and then she passes C prime to Bob. Now, what Bob does is that he tries to uh, decrypt C prime uh, under the key K here. And what he gets is that he, he tries to decrypt C XOR uh, with Eve's message here, which is basically, uh, so C is Alice's message, XOR with K, and then we have uh, XOR with Eve's message, and then an XOR with the key K here. So obviously these uh, Ks cancel each other. So Bob is left with M XOR M E here. So uh, Alice's message XOR with uh, Eve's message. And of course, Bob cannot uh, distinguish this. Uh, so he doesn't know what Alice wanted to send because then probably Alice wouldn't have to send the message. Uh, so he cannot uh, distinguish whether uh, Alice sent this or not. And in some cases, uh, Eve can actually guess what Alice is going to send. So uh, that if Bob is a bank, then most likely Alice will send the, uh, that she wants to make a transfer. And then maybe Eve can 
uh, Eve is a customer in the same bank, so she knows the format and she knows where the account number is, and then she can can change the account number just to uh, be mean to to Alice. So Alice's money goes uh, somewhere else. So take a few moments and think about how we can solve this problem, because Bob needs to know that Eve modified this message. Uh, so think about that for a few minutes. It's not an easy problem to solve, but uh, think a bit about it before we continue. So the idea here is message authentication codes. So Alice and Bob need something that Eve doesn't know uh, how to modify. And if that something is tied to the message, then a modified message would actually be uh, detectable. So now we have some more hints about how to go about this. So uh, take a few more minutes to, to think about that. Now, let's consider an example uh, of an approach uh, towards this. So let edge here be a one-way function. So a hash function. And if we use uh, edge of C uh, to create a message authentication tag, then Eve can also compute uh, the hash function of C prime and get the, the new uh, tag T prime here. So this, this wouldn't work uh, because Eve just uh, computes a new tag. Now, a secret hash function, that would violate Kirchhoff's principle, so that's not an option. Uh, but if we instead uh, use the message, maybe, because that one Eve doesn't know, rather than the ciphertext, uh, then uh, uh, edge of M here uh, is, is T. And uh, if we decrypt uh, a new C prime here, uh, then we would get some m prime, which is this, and obviously edge of m prime wouldn't be equal to the tag. Uh, whereas uh, if we decrypt the original ciphertext, yeah, this uh, would actually be the case. So this would uh, create a problem for uh, the attack we saw uh, previously. However, if uh, uh, Eve uh, can somehow make up M prime uh, totally from scratch herself, uh, then uh, she can actually uh, simply compute the new tag as well. So this would actually be the case in, in public key crypto systems, which we will uh, consider later. So this is not perfect either. And uh, it, uh, there actually exists attacks where despite that Eve doesn't uh, know the message, uh, she can actually succeed here. Uh, so this wouldn't work either, but uh, we're getting closer to uh, a solution. So the solution would be that we have a secret S which is uh, shared between Alice and Bob, and uh, then we uh, simply take the hash of the ciphertext together with the secret to, to generate uh, a tag T. Now Eve doesn't know S, which uh, means it's impossible for Eve to, to compute uh, this hash, this, this tag. Now, but Bob on the other hand, he knows this secret and he, he gets this ciphertext C prime, so he can just put these two together into the hash function and check whether the tag is, is correct or not. Uh, so he could immediately detect that Eve has modified uh, the message. Now this is uh, the correct idea and uh, there are some attacks on this uh, simple uh, scheme. But, uh, and some attacks depend on which hash function you're using and what, how, how it works. But uh, the idea is correct, but it requires a bit more uh, technicalities. So the way to do it 
uh, would be to, to use the hash-based message authentication code scheme. So edge is a hash function, one-way function, and C is the ciphertext uh, that we're interested in, in providing authenticity for, and S is our message authentication secret, uh, same as on the previous slide. Uh, then we can compute uh, the tag T here for the ciphertext C uh, using this secret uh, in this way. So uh, we, we need to, to use the hash function uh, twice. And uh, the way we do it is that we, we take our secret and we XOR it uh, with some padding, so uh, a padding value PI here, and this is specified uh, in, in the protocol, but it's not interesting uh, for us right now. And uh, we concatenate the ciphertext here. So we take uh, the key goes in here together with some padding and uh, our ciphertext, and we take that uh, run that through the hash function and we get a value. And this value we put in uh, yet again in, an, uh, in the same hash function, but now we, we take the secret and we XOR it with some other padding. And the important part here is that the padding here is different from here. Uh, this is also specified in the protocol, but uh, the exact values are, are not interesting for us. And then you concatenate the output from the first uh, hash function here, and you run all this uh, through the hash function again, and what you get out then is your tag. So you need to, to run this hash function first on the ciphertext, and then you take the output of that and run into the hash function again. And in both cases, you mix in the key there. Uh, and then you get uh, a tag. And this scheme is actually proven to be secure uh, in this uh, paper. And that was everything uh, for this time. Uh, thanks a lot.